Yeah, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Like, I've had this itch for like a good three weeks now, and now it kind of looks like I'm growing a third nipple. Oh, hey, good morning, everybody. All right, everybody, I got something new to show you. I added something to my garage this past weekend that I got for free. Let me give you a little bit of context on this. So basically, a guy found me through Instagram. He saw that I work on bikes and whatnot, and he had a CRF 150 that had been sitting for about two years, and that's, that's a dirt bike. So I got a first chance to ride a dirt bike, which was super fun, and I really, really want one now. Problem is, the guy didn't necessarily have all the money to fix it at the time. So he offered me another form of payment. He said, look, we could either wait to get the money, or I could give you this thing that's been sitting in my garage for a year or so. And I was like, well, what is this thing? So as soon as he sent me the pictures, I, I was on board. So I got to ride a dirt bike, I fixed it, it's working awesome. First time in two years that it's been running. So I got paid in a new vehicle. I'm not sure if it's that exciting for most of y'all, but let me just go ahead and show you guys. We got a 2007 Honda, Honda Metropolitan. It's a pretty good deal, I think. Only problem is it doesn't run, so today we're gonna get this thing running. It's Saturday, and I wanna be able to ride this thing either by night time or by tomorrow. So it's gonna be pretty easy. I have a feeling I already know what it is. Reason the bottom is actually taking off is because I actually kind of went ahead and jumped the gap, the old gas, like I said, it's been sitting for some time. Last thing they said, they tried starting it. It was cranking and cranking, but then it actually went fire, so. I'm just going to take the carburetor out like I had with everything else because that's usually the issue. Jets kind of get clogged up. So let's go ahead and take it apart. But first I need a battery to make sure everything else is going to work on it. Alright, so now with the trusty multimeter, we are going to check if the battery is any good. Now I'm pretty positive it is. I was told this battery was not that old, so I am positive that we have a strong 12 volts. Cut, cut the camera. So after totally not going to the store to buy a new battery, we have a strong 12.8. Nice. All right, so now that we got power, we can go ahead and test everything. So we're gonna turn the key on. Here's stuff happening. So we got the horn. We got the blinkers. Right side, left side. Okay, and brake lights. That stay on. We'll figure that out later. And if it turns over, we're in good shape. On these, you actually have to pull in the brake and then the starter. Nice, and you see the headlight turns on as well. We even got the cluster lit up too, so. We're in good shape. Now all we got to do is actually take the carburetor out, go ahead and clean it up, put some gas in it, and let's see what happens. I think we're in good shape. All right, just to check, make sure that we actually do have a working fuel pump. This is the fuel line. I just have that buttered up to the battery and and put the key on. Boom, we got fuel. And it did spark because I don't actually have it on there, but that's just to check. So we got fuel, cool. All right, finally, we got it out. Now it's time to get to cleaning. All right, so now it's time to clean the carburetor. I got my handy dandy catch can here and just some brake clean. So we need to hose it down a little bit because it's real grimy. All right, so now that we got this clean on the outside, it's time to open this up, see how it looks on the inside, clean the jets out and put it back on. This is gonna be pretty straightforward. Um, I'll talk a little bit on how to do this. If you are here to learn how to clean a carburetor out, it's pretty easy, so let's go. All right, so we're gonna start by taking the bowl off. Three screws, that's it, let's get to it. Hopefully this will loosen up a little bit, get it off. 
Boom. All right, this is the inside of your carburetor. This is the float, these are the jets. There is a lot of crap in here. So these jets just come out with a flathead. These are brass, be very careful not to put too much torque on these because they will break. And the float just comes off with this little pin right here. They're gonna slide out, take the float off, and there's gonna be a valve right under here. And then we just clean it all out. And as you see in the bowl itself, there is a lot of crap in there. Okay, all that can easily clog up your jets, and which I am pretty sure is the reason why this thing was not turning on, which is clogged up, so all we gotta do is clean it. All right, so now that we've got the jets off, a very easy way to check this is simply put it up into a light. If you can see a hole through it, then it's usually clear, but you already have it off, might as well spray it through. If you cannot see a hole through it, you cannot see light at the end of the tunnel, it's clogged. This one I can, but also I can see that there is a lot of crap in it. So it's very simple. Car cleaner, brake cleaner, I just use brake cleaner, doesn't really matter. And all you do is put it up to the hole. And just make sure stuff comes out of the, out of this other side. You can use, you know, compressed air if you want. And now we're clear. It's that simple. Sometimes there'll be a lot of gunk in there and if the pressure of a can isn't enough or compressor isn't enough, you could either just run a wire through it, a mechanics wire, maybe the high E string on a guitar I've heard works really well because those don't break that easy. So yeah, it's pretty simple. So now we just gotta finish the rest of it. Okay, now I know for sure this is the issue because the other jet is actually completely clogged. I cannot see even the slightest bit of light through it. So it's that simple to figure out what the hell's wrong with it. So I just put it up to it. The straw works really well. You see, nothing coming out, nothing's coming out. Boom. And more, another way you can do it, just simply blow into it. If it's really, really hard to blow air through it, it's either really a really small jet, but even small jets are gonna have air go through it. Now I'm starting to see a little more light through it. So just repeat the process until it's clear. Very simple. Boom, we're done. That is a clean carburetor. Now we just get it back on the scooter and see what happens. All right, so now's the moment of truth. Let's go ahead, let the, go ahead and let the fuel pump prime and fill up the carburetor. And hopefully, if we're in good shape, it will start. That already sounds way better. All right, so I have to do a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, I went ahead and went to the dealership nearby and just got a brand new air filter because this thing was pretty clogged up and could really be a big reason why this thing isn't turning right. It turns out I actually have to reset the throttle position sensor as well. So, you know, now that's taken care of. I think we are ready. We did get it to fire a few times here and there, but it, it wasn't completely good. I went ahead and took the carburetor back out again just to give it a second go over because sometimes you just have to do that. So now we should be able to get it to turn on. All right, now all that's left is put everything back together and uh, see if we can go for a test drive. All right, so here's the issue. Uh, it's like raining. So, uh, can't necessarily go out on the street. But, you guys want a test drive? I will give you a test drive.
thank you for watching. I, I don't know anymore, man.